This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The Oakland A's faced the Cincinnati Reds at Riverfront Stadium for Game 6 of the 1972 World Series on October 21st. The A's led the best of seven series three games to two. And this is the NBC radio broadcast of Game 6, featuring announcers Jim Simpson and Monty Moore. Williams 
and the A's would like to wind it up today. No one during the regular season 15 and 5. Started the first game of this series, but the loser giving up three runs, all of them scoring on the two home runs by Gene Hennett. In the playoffs, he started the third game of the playoffs and gave up one run and six innings six against Pittsburgh, and was not a pitcher of record there. Nolan opened the 1970 World Series, and home runs again were his problem. He surrendered them to Boog Powell, Ellie Hendricks, and Butch Robinson of Baltimore, and lost that one. So this is his fourth World Series start, and he is 0-2. And the Cincinnati Reds have not won a home game in the World Series in 32 years. They will try today. Perez at first, Morgan at second, Concepcion at short, Messi at third, Rose at left, Nolan in center, McRae at right, Messi at center, Nolan is warming up. Captain Harris is preparing to step in, and we pause 10 seconds for station identification. It's 10 a.m. This is KGW Parker. Along with Marty Moore, this is Jim Simpson back at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. This is Game 6 for the World Series. Oakland can close it out today. They lead three games to two. Captain Harris steps in, and here's the voice of the Oakland Athletic, Monty Moore. Thank you very much, Jim Simpson, and hi once again, everybody. Kathy Captain Harris, who has not had a good series with a bat, steps in. Kathy started off the series as if he were going to tear the Cincinnati pitching apart. He had two hits off Nolan in the first game here in Cincinnati. He has only had one hit since that time. Three hits and 20 at bats for the A's leadoff man. Alleret defense tightens up on the corners at third and first, and here's the first pitch of the ball game. Captain Harris swings and doesn't get it, strike one. Aaron Nolan, a 16-game winner, he lost only five, and his earned run average is super 1.99, which means he is allowed less than two runs every nine innings he's pitched this year. One strike pitch to Kevin Harris at a curveball, backed out to the third base, and Minky backs up to take it, throws over the first for the out. Crunchy, the highway of picking, has been one of the young heroes for Cincinnati in this series. He has not mishandled the ball. He has just been outstanding, playing shallow against a lot of the A's batters and having to steer some hard line drives. That time, Campbell Harris bounced one down off that artificial turf, which usually bounced over a man's head. Minsky's a big guy, 6'1", and just backed up, casually took it and threw him out. Get out, Matty Alou. Foul away, strike one. Matty has had only one hit in the World Series in 17 at best. Here's the value at 318 in the National League this year for the St. Louis Cardinals, faded over to the Oakland days for the last month of the season, and he hit 281 for Oakland. No one's pitch on the way. Pop foul back here at strike two. Matty Lou, a little guy, a left-handed batter. became an outstanding percentage hitter when he quit trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. He hits it to all fields now. Cincinnati plays him shaded over towards left. Gary Nolan, a strike throw, is ahead of Alou at 0 2. Joe Rudy will bat third for open here in the first inning. Nolan shakes off then. Now comes to the plate with a fastball and it bounced to the second baseman. Morgan backs up to take it. Throws the first he got him by his side. a hero in game number two last Sunday here in this ballpark. He planted a home run into the mezzanine section of the left field area, and he took the ball off the wall in left field that probably saved the game. Joe Rudy, over 300 average for the A's through the season. He hit 19 home runs for Oakland, and had 70 runs batted in. Right-handed batter, very strong hitter. Six during the swing on a hit up into the air in the deep right field. Tony or Hal McCray is under the ball. He's got it. And that's three down. After the first half inning, it's Oakland, nothing in Cincinnati coming to back. Hi, this is Joe Garagio. Well, it's World Series time, and even people who aren't real fans start taking an interest in baseball. And that's because you're seeing the best. And when you see the best of anything, you've got to admire it. Like the new Dodge Charger. For the last few years, people have looked to Charger for the newest, the latest in automobile styling. And once again, in 1973, Charger hasn't disappointed them. Charger has the clean, smooth lines that you've come to expect. But this year, Charger has more. 
Charger has an electronic ignition system for sure to start. Charger has torsion quiet ride to help keep out those annoying road noises. And Charger tops it all off by giving you a choice of three vinyl roof styles. That's right. There's a canopy vinyl roof, a halo vinyl roof, and a distinctive Charger SE vinyl roof. So if you want to see one of the best cars with plenty of family-sized room, see Dodge Charger at your nearby Dodge dealer. Kept off the bases very well by the ace pitching staff until yesterday, and as Jim said, he changed that in a hurry on the very first pitch thrown by Catfish Hunter. He was batting left handed that time, and he is now turned around to bat right against Ryan Blue. He won only 16 for Oakland this year, and he was invaluable in the playoffs down to the bullpen. Here's his first pitch, and Rose looks at a curve and is looking for ball one. Home plate umpire is American leaguer Bill Howard. Working a first World Series game. Blues one all pitch. Fast strike is called one and one. He draws followed by Morgan and Dolan. Blues backed out of a deep crack either side of the plate. With a high bouncing ball is short. Camp and Eric is not to hurry to get him. They go to first. Jim finally got him with a great throw from deep shortstop. Anytime that ball bounces twice on this turf, you think Rose has a chance to beat it. But Cavaliers has a gun for an arm and shot him down. There's one away. Here's little Joe Morgan, who, though has not had a hit in the series, certainly was a big factor yesterday in Cincinnati's victory because he walked twice and scored two runs. Morgan for the year. Led the majors in walks, getting 115. Blue six turn is high for ball one. Morgan was a busy little second baseman this year. At the plate, he was up 552 times officially. There's a drive deep right center field. He's ready for the charge in that one. Mighty Lee's on the run. It's going to be off the fence. Feeling the ball with Angel Manguel. Morgan is going to stop the second with a double. Now he's on his way to third, and he's going to make it, I believe. He drives out of his center, six to two eight. Blue. Off the line, that is the pitch. Little blooper out over third. Back 
attended by a charging Tampa Campanaris to short drop of the open A. Very, very fine play by Campanaris. And Tolan was hit right on the fifth by a lot of blue fastball. He hit it in the air over Kyle Bender, who was playing shallow, and Campanaris, even with a left-handed batter up and playing deep, managed to get over there with a great burst of speed and back in the ball right behind third. Now here's Johnny Bench. Bench in the series has five hits. Here's the pitch. Curved him and missed inside ball line. Third Campanaris, the open shortstop, is playing a good 40 feet behind the baseline between second and third. Mondo very deep at third. The pitch to Vince. There's a drive deep left field. That ball is really hit. Hitting on the run. Going for it. Back hands it on the drive. Right at the wall. In foul territory, Joel Rudy caught that ball. I believe he caught it in fair ground, but he went into the wall. And is in foul territory down the left field line in the Red Zeehat score. One hit and one error and a man left after an inning of play. It is nothing and nothing. This is Milo Hamilton. I call the play-by-play -play for the Atlanta Braves, and I do the radio commercials for Delta, the official airline of the Braves. When I talk about Delta, well, I speak from experience. Last month, I flew more than 16,000 miles on Delta. It was a rugged schedule, but the Delta people made it as smooth as anyone could ask for. Delta is an airline run by professionals, 24,000 professionals. Each highly skilled individual knows his job and gives it his best. That goes for the reservationist who confirms your space by Delta-matic computer in three seconds, right onto the baggage handler who delivers your bags in an average time of seven minutes after you land. It's what Delta calls total service. I'd like to recommend Delta Airlines to you. And I have one other suggestion for people who travel, the American Express money card. You can even extend payment for your Delta tickets on the sign and fly plan. You're always ready to go with an American Express money card. And Delta is ready when you are. Jim Simpson with Monty Moore. We go to the second. In the first, no one got a one, two, three. In the Cincinnati first, to find the fielding plays by Camp and Harris, two of them, and the running catch of a line drive off the bat of Johnny Bench, who pulled the wide blue pitch down the left field line. Blue and the A's got out of trouble. In trouble because Morgan lashed a double off the wall and right and went to third on Manuel Soignera. So it's a nothing nothing ball game. We go to the second, and here again is Mark. Mike Epstein, the A's clean up hitting first baseman. Minister played 12 times in the World Series without a base hit. He was Oakland's leading home run hitter for the year with 26. The pitch from Nolan is low, ball one. Epstein had 26 homers, 70 runs batted in, and a very good average for him, 270. Nolan's pitch on the way. Epstein looks at a fastball right down the middle. Nolan doesn't throw all that many home runs, but the A's tagged him for two in the first game he pitched. Standing changeup, no one has. Here's the pitch. Curve and it's a beauty. Oh, no one spun that ball right over the top. And it was driving down through that strike zone. Let's see, finds himself behind now. The ball and two strikes. Red defense deep and around to the right. Here's the pitch. It's low. Two balls, two strikes. Have been generating excitement in the early innings in the last couple of three games. Though they haven't scored that much earlier, they have definitely had the chances. Two two pitch that scene and he swings and misses strike three. Gary Nolan. Strike that up scene, one out in a second, and here is Sal Bando. The A's team captain has 15 home runs for the season, knocked in 77 runs to lead the A's in that department, but his batting average fell off to a major league low for him of 236. Fastball, crack ball. One goal in the World Series has had four hits. He's been up 18 times. Nolan, a short wind up throw, then misses low and away at the ball one and one. And Gary turned and looked back at the mound at town as if he were unhappy with his footing on that pitch. Nothing, nothing. Top half of the second inning. Game number six of the great 1972 World Series. Curveball of Ando. Just misses and Nolan is begging the plate on fire for that one. 
balls, one strike. And they take low, ball three. Angel Manziel is on deck. Then Gene Pennis behind him. Hayes coaches Irv Norton at third base. Jerry Adair at first for open. Endo hit the line drive to a center field. He has a base hit. Nolan fields it on the first half. And with one on, the A's have their first base runner of the game. It comes here in the second with one out, and here is Angel Manziel. He stroked the game winning hit night before last, and that come from behind him for Oakland in Oakland. Manziel came up yesterday as a pinch hitter with the chance to do the same kind of thing. Hit the ball very sharply to the right side. It was fielded by Morgan, and they threw him out. For the regular season, Angel played in only 91 games. Hit 246, he did have five home runs. No one six. Strike call. He's around the plate all the time. See some clear blue skies ahead. Here today, it's been kind of overcast and rain. Curveball hanging high and inside, and then draw it one and one. And the Fingers World Series. So far. And one pitch. Curve as a beauty. That's too far. Jim Nolan's overhanded curveball looked a lot sharper early in the game than it did here on Saturday. Dwight Martin in will point out again that he did have that shoulder problem. Worked out a little bit yesterday in the middle of the day he started his one up only 10 minutes before it might have moved. But apparently he's all right. To find out if he could go today. Here's the one and two pitch to Mangrella. Curveball hit on the ground of the third baseman. Mincy takes it. He's going to have only one play, and that's the first, and he doesn't get him. Now he called him out. Chris Kalakuri is calling safe at first. It looked like, and then he called him out. Not only did it look like him, Marty, that's exactly what he did do. He called him safe, and then called him out. Warning at the bag, saying that Manuel failed to stop the bag. Wow, that could be the only thing, and it might turn out to be a huge play. Now, runner at second base, Bando, and here's Gene Pettis. He's had four home runs in the series. Curve turn is high for ball one. put in the A's lineup today to try to get a little more batting punch. George Hendricks, the rookie, had been starting and not hit the ball at all. Here's a wild pitch. High fly ball. Tennis got into that one, and it's a mile high out in the left field. On comes Pete Rose. He's got it. And he's really playing here in the second inning. After hitting your hands to score, it's with nothing to come to that nothing. Hi, Johnny Bench for Anko Windshield Wipers. Can you imagine the reaction if a manager told his team that he was supplying them with baseball bats that weren't absolutely the best? Well, your team, that is your family, deserves the best, too. Anco windshield wiper blades. If your present wipers are streaking, replace them with Anco wipers. Look for the service station with the bright yellow Anco cabinet. They can snap on new blades while you're gassing up. Tell them you heard about Anco from Johnny Bench. This year, almost all the new cars are the same. Most of the 1973 models are designed to run on low-octane gasoline, like Gulf Tank. The owner's manual will say so. Check the recommendation in your owner's manual and try a tank full of Gulf Tank. It has the performance out of the package you'd expect from Gulf, and it costs even less than Gulf regular. So why pay more than you have to? Try Gulf Tank, the low-cost gasoline for new cars. Series with eight base hits and eight ball hitters and number of hits. 
facing Vital Blue in the first pitch of the curve high, ball one. Very unusual happening, a runner missing first base. Mind you, the blood jumper missing the takeoff board and just didn't have a time. Here's the one and all to Perez, and a fastball misses, it's two and all. Perez, one of the real good RBI men in the National League. Six years in a row, 90 RBIs or better for Cincinnati. Here's a high foul pop out of play. Minor Blue has not overpowered any of these Cincinnati batters as yet. Second time around in a World Series for players to see the opposing pitchers. You ordinarily see more offense. They know a little bit more about how the pitcher is going to throw to them, how the breaking ball breaks, where the fastball takes off. Here's a 2 1 pitch, a slow curve, hit up into the air into right field, not deep. On comes Matty Alou of the A's, and he's got it. And Perez has retired for the first down in the second inning. Here's Al McCray. McCray has been up six times in the series. He's had three hits, two of them pinch hit. McCray openly admits that he is a slasher at the plate. He said, I come out swinging. I may fall flat on my face, but I'm going to go down swinging if I go down. Hit 278 this year, and pop rolls for the Reds. Pitch thrown is high and inside ball one, and Bite is not getting that real good fastball over the inside part of the plate. Usually an out pitch for him against right handed batter. Last one swung on a miss, but it's one and one. Bite comes to the plate with an off speed pitch that misses outside, two and one. Each club has one base hit. Morgan, a one-out double. He went over the third on the play on a throwing error by Mangel. The Blues got Tolan and Bench. He went pitch to McCray, and he's right down on his knees, swinging at that one. He lost two strikes. He does get his touch, doesn't he? Hit that white shoe in the air and throws. McCray hits it in the air to center field. Andrew Mandrell is back up in front of the warning track. Lots of room and he makes the catch. Two out. Here's Mike Bryant. 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 Here's Mike Barry, here's the pitch. High foul ball off first near the stands, and here in Cincinnati, the stands are much closer to the field than in Oakland, and that one goes over into the seat. Let's get out of the second inning. Oakland and Cincinnati, nothing and nothing. If the A's win it, it's all over for 1972, and they'll carry a World Championship trophy back to the Bay Area. The Reds win it. We'll go to Game 7 tomorrow, right here in Cincinnati. The pitch to Minky, high, a ball, one and one. The Reds entered this World Series, highly favored, to win it all. Here's a drive towards left center field, Manguel on his bicycle, going to his right, he reaches up and picks it off, and it's three, up, three down here in the second. And the score after two innings of play at Riverfront Stadium is Cincinnati and Oakland, nothing, nothing. Quite a while now, these World Series broadcasts have been brought to you in part by White Guard Andy Putzman, the one that really helps keep you dry when the action's hot. Well, this year, White Guard is pleased to introduce a brand new Andy Putzman, White Guard Natural Pest. It's got the same great wetness fighter as regular White Guard, and it's got a great new scent made from natural ingredients so it smells light and clean, not heavy or artificial, like a lot of other Andy Putzman. New White Guard Natural Scent Andy Putzman. You like the way it works, and the new natural way it smells. Gillette makes a better double edge now than the one your father used. The smoothest edge we can put on a blade, but the smoothest shade we can put on your face. The Platinum Plus Blade. And someday, Gillette will make even a better blade for your son. The more things change, the more they stay the same. We made the first blade, and we're still the first blade. Gillette. Platinum Plus.
Eddie Fitzgerald with Monty Moore. We're watching Dick Williams, the manager who has come out, talk to Bill Haller, the home plate umpire, and the third base umpire, Mel Steiner. One from the American League, the other from the National, and I have no idea what it is that Williams is talking about. To get back to the subject of Ida Blue in this nothing running ball game, despite the fact that it is nothing to nothing, they've been hitting Blue pretty hard. Rappin Harris made a great play on Rose, this high chopper. Bench made drive to left the left of Rudy had to haul it in, and then last inning in the second, Perez, McRae, and Mickey all had good cuts, but it's still a short of game. Top of the third, the green, the batter, and Monty Moore, the enough. Green has had four base hits in this series. He's now 12 times. The pitch one I hit deep short. Over for the ball, Concepcion. He throws the first, and Green is an easy out. One out of the third inning. It looks as if that conversation between Dick Williams and the third base umpire nothing to do about the pitcher blowing on his hand. As you know, during the regular season, in order for them to put their hand up to their mouth, the blow on it or touch the fingers with the tongue, they have to step off the dirt part of the pitching mouth. But during this cooler weather, out in open and here again today, apparently they're given permission for a pitcher to do that while on the mound. New final move. Takes the call strike. There is a curve and hits the inside corner quite beautifully. Nolan, a native Californian, now makes his home here in Cincinnati. Out of his third ball, quite beautiful. Only two down in the third inning. Through the eighth batting order the first time around without being scored on this time. He starts all over with Burke Cavanaugh. The eighth had only one base hit. They really had two that Manzlaw would have stepped in the bag at first as he was running. He had beaten out a deep grounder to the left side of the infield. Chris Pelicruz had called him safe until he saw he missed the bag. Cavanaugh just went off the leg of the pitcher. Nolan knocked it down, underhands the ball to first to the yard. Good break for Gary Nolan there, but that ball did hit him. The A's go one, two, three in the third, and it is still Cincinnati and Oakland. Nothing to nothing. Hi, this is Joe Garagiola. With World Series time here, managers depend on players to deliver dependable performances. And like a manager, you want dependable performance from your car. So look to the big guy. It's got dependable features such as electronic ignition for more starting voltage. And there's an electronic voltage regulator for longer battery life. Plus, torsion quiet ride for smoothness and quiet. But these features won't cost you. They're standard on all big Dodge models this year. See the big Dodge soon at your Dodge dealers. Extra care in engineering. It makes a difference. From Chrysler Corporation cars. One. It makes a difference in Dodge, Chrysler, and Plymouth. Discover the difference. Drive one. We call 30 seconds for station identification. It's 1028 from KGW Portland. People who don't need it, drink it. Don't start on the diet, try it. You don't have to give up good taste to save on calories. Diet like cola tastes so good, everybody likes it. Everybody likes it. Everybody likes it. Everybody likes it. Because it tastes so good. Everybody likes it. That's all around the last half of the third inning. Dave Concepcion, the red shortstop at the plate, and he has a count of one strike. His final blue throws the curve for strike two. Concepcion has to play on side with the baseball. He thinks it might be a little too discolored to use. Sunshine has broken through in Cincinnati. Nothing or nothing. Concepcion will be followed by Nolan and Rose here in the last half of the third inning. For the Oakland A's. It's the windup. Here's his 0 2 pitch, and he left him standing with a blue blazer. A fastball. Concepcion stands at the plate to question the call, but that ball is long gone. Over to third and around the horn it goes. 
he gets his first crack out of the day. And that's the first ball again that looks like he's really put the mustard on. There's Gary Hall on the pitcher. Right-handed throw, right-handed batter. First pitch thrown is low for ball one. Nolan batted twice the first game without a hit. Three and all misses. It is two and all. One out third inning, no score. Pitch to know and he'll be taking the A's and it's cost him at this strike, two and one. Third base coach Alex Gromit for Cincinnati. George Sugar at first. Two and one pitch. There's a drive foul. No one hitting a little late at a blue fastball. to start yesterday's game. Had he had been able to throw well the night before in his warm-up, but he did not. Blue's 2 2 pitch. Just misses. Tennis started to throw that ball to third. He thought they had him, and now Blue comes up with a big pitch. He needs a strike here to Gary Nolan. Down comes the arm, and a pitch on the way. Swinging strike three, and he really honed that one. Right of Blue looking now as if he's getting a little loose. But he's throwing that ball by the eighth and ninth hitters in the lineup. Now he has to go to work against the top. Here's Pete Rose, the left fielder. Reds have one hit. A double off the wall in right center by Joe Morgan. The A's have one hit, a single by Sal Bando. Here's Blue's pitch to Pete Rose. And he's almost hit with a breaking ball. Had to jump out of the way. between Rose and some of the A's players. Blue misses low with a curve. It's 2-0. The pitcher throws it about it. He didn't do it with a breaking ball. Rose looking him over. He's found himself out in front of Blue now. It's 2-0. All three. Blue ordinarily a pretty good control pitcher. For the season, he walked only 48 while striking out 111. He's got to throw some strikes in a row to Rose. All four, he lost him. Now let's see if the red running game turns on here. First two gets on Gene Tennis. The A's catcher is taking a lot of abuse from the red runners in this series. It has not all been Gene Tennis, however. The A's pitchers have not done a very good job of holding the runners on at first base. Two out of walk to Pete Rose, and with two out of walk yesterday to Joe Morgan. Started the Cincinnati Rally. Rose jumped off first. Blue looks at him. Here's the pitch to the plate, taking a call strike. Morgan was trying to help Rose out if he wanted to go. Might have had a very quick release this time after he dropped down to the set position. Ten bases for the season. You're still in one of the series. There he goes. A pitch and a pitch out. Tennis throws a second right on target and rolls it out a mile. Gene Tennis called a pitch out and they got Pete Rose down at second. It really wasn't very close. So after three innings of play, the score. Cincinnati and open, nothing and nothing. Gorilla, regular menthol and aromatic. At Road 
we have got a lot to share, and we care about the people who shop here. We'll give you good reason to stop here. Just think of roads as you store. Phone me the automatic answering service that records incoming messages. Brings your pre-recorded message to callers, even if you know who's calling without listing the receiver. Perfect for home or office, just one thirty-nine fifty at Roads Downtown and Gateway. <laughs> In that uh, blue Jigla cruiser striking our conception and Nolan, as you pointed out, the 8 9 batters. But when he lost Pete Rose, he lost them on four pitches that were all low in the strike zone, as opposed to high where he had been when Perez, McRae, Vance, and Mankey were all getting the good shot cut. And then again, Dean Kenneth, who has not been the defensive catcher in this series that Johnny Bass is all year long, finally had a chance to throw out the running Pete Rose and did so. Now we go to the fourth, it will be a little rooting up. Here is Monty Moore. One of the secrets of uh, throwing a man out with a pitch out is to take the time, and Kenneth definitely did that. He missed throwing Rose out one time earlier in the series. Rose was going just because he hurried his throw and threw it high and out in the center field. He had that one right on the button. Here's Matty Alou to lead off. Harry Nolan's pitch to Matty is inside for a ball 1-0. and These men are playing for a lot of money. Some of the players have figured it out on the basis of the money taken in on four straight sellouts, the four games the players share in. The winners may get over $20,000. Foul ball back to the stream, one and one. In the last three years, the winners of the World Series have gotten over $18,000 a man. A dramatic jump after 1969 when the winners got $13,000, but it went up very high after that. World Series ever, the winners got eleven hundred dollars a man. And during the war years, they sometimes got as low as four hundred dollars a man for losing in a World Series. Now Lee pops one up right out into very short right field. On comes McCray. He has it. One out in the fourth inning. Gary Nolan pitching a strong game here this afternoon. Not overpowering, but he's getting his curveball over. Here's Joe Rudy. ball a fairly deep right field for out in the first inning. Really takes his time more than any other player in the series in getting into the batter's box. He's set now and a pitch turn of the curve a little high. The Reds give Rudy about 90 feet of the left field foul line. Their left fielder, Rose, plays on a line from first through second, right on out into the outfield. They definitely don't expect him to pull the ball. There's a high fly ball in the left field. Rose has to go over to his right. He has plenty of time to get into that one. He's got it. When you see a man like Rudy hit on that high, he has just missed hitting a home run by a fraction of an inch on the baseball. He just got under that one a little bit. Another two down, and here's Mike Epstein. Cincinnati and Oakland, nothing and nothing. 1972 World Series from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. We're happy you're with us here on NBC and around the world, wherever you might be following America's national pastime. Epstein goes for a high breaking ball and fouls it off. Strike one. has had only one base runner. Cincinnati has had only two. One strike count. No one sits. Bringing strike two and up in it. And that plays as if he is really off balance against this right-hander. One way on no one fastball. Well ahead of him at 0-2. See if he waits one here. Just that batter ball, 1-2. and two. A gigantic crowd to welcome the Reds home last night at the airport. That's the goes down 
Hello, this is Johnny Grant speaking for Anco Windshield Wipers. Back before I was playing for the Reds, I always thought the right fielder had the best position on the team. All he does is stand there waiting for an occasional high fly. But you know, right field can be like the windshield wipers on your car. They don't do anything either until some rain comes their way. But boy, do they have to hustle then. In a rainstorm or a snowstorm, clean wiping and co windshield wipers or snow blades can save your life. But wipers like ball players eventually get old. Over a period of time, the sun, wind, and air pollution gets to them, and the rubber gradually deteriorates, and they really get aches and pains. If your wipers are over six months old, man, they could be over the hill and going into a permanent slump. So the thing to do is bench them. Drive into any service station where you see the bright yellow and co service cabinet. And tell the man you want a fresh new pair of Anco windshield wipers. That's Anco by Anderson. Definitely Major League. It's no secret if you know beneath the Cincinnati Reds, you've got to handle Rose, Morgan, and Poland. Something that the A's just saw effectively in the early going. Last couple of games, that has not happened. Morgan will lead it off. He has already dealt off the wall and walked as far as third base, and that's been the only threat. Of course, Johnny Bennett. This is about his fourth and his mark. Line of blue. Little Joe Morgan, who makes his home and open the home of the A's during the winter. Tries to run. And he misses strike one. There was a breaking ball, and up high, Morgan ran up on the ball as if he wanted to bunt it. Then he saw that it was going to be too high to get down. He tried to draw the bat back, but he'd gone too far. the Cincinnati fans on here. Third ball to Morgan, misses inside. It's one and one. They have struck out two and walked one. The Reds send Pedro Borbone to work out in their bullpen. Lose six. Breaking ball again. It is now two and one to Morgan. He really looks him over. He worked Raleigh fingers for a big walk. In the game yesterday, late. Turned it into a big run. He won big. Foul off. Back to you watch him, it's almost like having him hit a double. Psychologically, it's probably worse on a team to walk him and see him steal second and to see him hit a double. The thing about him, I would imagine, one reason he gets so many walks is not because he's so small and lifts him over, but pitchers have to work carefully to him. He can also hit the long ball. He has 16 home runs for Cincinnati this year. Kicks and throws. High fly ball behind the plate. Dean Tennis throws the last away right out in front of the open dugout. He puts it away, and Morgan is the first out of the fourth inning. You know, Jim, it's pretty great to see what a World Series does to a city. Here in Cincinnati, almost 15,000 fans at the airport last night. When the A's returned home from their first two games of the series, they had a crowd about that same size at the Oakland airport. And Monty, really, I can't remember. And I talked to folks over the by. A greater two weeks of baseball than the American League East finish the playoffs in both leagues and now this World Series. Just then, baseball's finest year. Here is Cohen taking a breaking ball strike at the knees. Both the Reds and the A's had to go five hectic games to win their division playoffs in baseball's first ever five game playoff series. Cohen ran up on a fastball and left it in the catcher's mitt for a strike at throwing two. Blue and Gary Nolan with the same results, picking different kinds of ball games here today. Vida overpowering pitcher, Nolan an off speed specialist. 0 2 to Tolan, he struck him out. Nolan had about a half cut at that pitch, and now he's asking the play umpire where it was. So Vida Blue now has struck out three in the game. Here's Johnny Bench, who ripped one towards the foul line and left. In the first game, with Morgan at third and two down, and Joe Ruby, who's been an outstanding outfielder all year for Oakland, ran it down, backhanded the ball just to be crossed the foul line and banged into the fence. Here's the pitch. Then swings and misses. What a cut he had. Johnny hit a home run off by the blue in the All-Star game in Detroit two summers ago.
He did a lot of them this year. 40 against National League pitchers. Knocked in 125 runs. Change up. Misses low of all one and one. Bench in this series has had five base hits. Only one of them, an extra base job. A double off the right field wall here in Cincinnati. He's a one and one pitch. Fastball rolling inside. Two and one. The pitch that Bob is not really getting over effectively here today. Lee Borbon is throwing Gary Nolan. May have told him his arm is tightened up. He's working hard in the bullpen. 2-1 to the bench. Ball three it is now. The Bob is shooting at one spot. Looks like low inside of a knee high and he's missing it. Now he has a big pitch to make to bench. He'll be looking for one. He can send for a ride. Here it comes. Five drive, deep left field. He just hit it out of here. It is Rose on a home run. Should I be over there? 
Manziel hit the ball to right center field. Now left-hander Grimsley is up throwing for Cincinnati. Well, as he was yesterday, they'll have everybody in their bullpen up. This is shoot the work day. At least sign of trouble by Nolan, and he'll be out of there. One strike pitch. Manziel fouls it off at strike two. Exactly where the pitch was, bench hit. Three and one count. And I'll tell you this, he definitely put it in the left field stands in a hurry. A line drive went out of here as if it were shot by a bazooka. From here, it looks as if it might have been low and away, but not low enough, apparently, before he went away. He counts from Angwell. Curveball hit high in the air. The deep left field. Back to his feet, Rose. He's on a warning track. Turning around. He's got it.
the stretch. The pitch. Green takes the curve in the dirt. Bench takes it again on the first out. Now band over the A's open the inning with a line single to center. Angel Manuel. Get a ball to the wall in left field. Gene Tennis hit one to the deepest part of the outfield straightaway center and Tolan made the catch on the warning track. Now here's Dick Green who has four hits in this World Series. Pitch. Drive right center field. Tolan's got to go for him to get this one. He won't. It's going to hit the wall. A little hop. Here's Vandal riding third. He's coming home. The throw to the plate will not be made. The A's have tied the ball game. Boy, if you could ever see a roof caving in, it was right here in this inning. The A's have strung together four blasts in a row off Gary Nolan. Jim Simpson for a guy who hasn't had it very much this year. Dick Green has hit the ball well in this series. That's right, Martin. I've noticed he's brought it. Blue is coming up, and Walker's taking a seat. Now the Blue is back in the ball game, 1-1. I think Dick Williams like his chances better with by the Blue. We're not going to see too much more of Gary Nolan, however. Here comes Sparky. And the Cincinnati pitchers say when Sparky comes out there, he's not coming out for a conversation. He does all his talking on the bus and in the clubhouse. When he goes to the mound, he's going out to take him out. So Sparky Anderson has a hook in his hand. He's going to put it in Gary Nolan. And Gary here in this inning, after pitching four very strong innings for Cincinnati, just got the ball up. And I don't know, you might say, Jim, he's a little fortunate to be in a tie ball game the way they hit the ball right here. They're going to bring in Ross Grimsley, a starting pitcher. In one of the games of this series, he's a left-hander. Well, ball is still in the bullpen. And Sparky, I would imagine, hated to have to take Noah out of here right now and bring in one of these men because the pitcher's spot comes up for it in the next inning if they get that far. And he may have the use of this pitcher for a very short time. Cincinnati fans can't forget the 15 games he has won here this year. He's done an outstanding job. Taking Gary Nolan out. Four and two thirds innings. He has given up one run. He is could be charged, of course, to Green score from second base. There have been three base hits, two of those in this inning. But then again, Manguel says he goes to the wall and Dean Tennis to Cohen all the way to the warning track and deep center field 400 feet away before Green lined that shot off the right center field wall to make it one to one. So Nolan could lose the ball game to Green score, but right now he's charged with the one run. Grimsley is coming on, and Grimsley, of course, was a starter and a winner in this World Series. But then the other night in that uh, very bizarre and great ball game in which the A's came back in the last of the ninth inning, he was the loser. He had worked five and two-thirds innings overall. Earned one average 3.46 with one of the real fine young pitchers, and his fastball is just that much behind Don Keller, who owns the best fastball of the Cincinnati Red Staff. Uh, Grimley, Grimsley, who worked yesterday, will work again today, and he'll be pitching to Vida Blue, and that man is still going down in the bullpen for Cincinnati as he, as he has been for the last 15 or 20 minutes. Pedro Bourbon. Green at second, two out in a 1-1 ball game in the top of the fifth, and Blue will switch around and back right-handed against Ross Grimsley. Something he doesn't do too much, Jim. Uh, a little unusual, as a matter of fact. He's got a bat right-handed here. off the stretch to pitch to Vida. Live ball one. The A's bullpen was completely fresh. Vida might not be batting right here. But the ace of the bullpen, Raleigh Fingers, went some four innings yesterday. Here's the pitch. Back call at one and one. Grimsley popped that one in there with plenty on it. Cincinnati got their run on one mighty swing of the bat by... Great catcher, Johnny Bent. The A's with a single and a double. Here's the pitch to Blue. Outside, ball two. Green blocks the dash off second base and might have disconcerted. Grimsley just enough that time. They're getting to throw that ball out of the strike zone. They 
The outfielders are playing shallow. Green Knight have a hard time scoring on a hit. Here's a fresh call at two and two. That might be academic the way Green's is scoring now anyway. Points a lot of times with two strikes running, batting left handed. And she's playing a fairly shallow at third right now. Two two count. Grimsley comes to the plate. Ball three. And now he has a big pitch to make. If he loses blue, he'll have to pitch to Campanaris. What a world series for pitchers and defenders. time baseball purists love him like this. Three two pitch on the way. He walks him. Mark Grimsley comes into the game to pitch to Fighter Blue. And walks him. And now Campy Campanaris comes up with a runner at second, a runner at first. And I would imagine the reason they chose Grimsley then over the right-hander for a ball is the fact that Fighter Blue ordinarily bats left-handed. Well, he never swung to that right-handed. He took a total of six pitches and worked his way off. That could be a big loss. The first one issued to an A's player today. Now Burt Campanaris comes on. He's grounded out of the infield fly. Grimsley set. Here's the pitch. Campy takes outside of all. Why all? And the natives here at Cincinnati get a little restless. Green leading off second base. Just a little patch of dirt around the bases here. All the rest is green carpet. The pitch to Campanera swung on and popped up. They're going to get out of it. Joe Morgan, the second baseman of Cincinnati, coming in behind the pitcher's mound. He's got it. And Campanera lets a lot of men on base in this World Series in scoring position. There's it again as Grimsley gets him to pop up. We're at the halfway point of the game, and we're right where we started as far as deciding it. It's Cincinnati and Oakland one and one. I'm sure you've all heard of the Plymouth Duster. It's a great little car. Economical, seats five comfortably. But maybe you haven't heard of the Space Duster. That's what Chrysler Plymouth is calling their Duster when you order the new fold-down rear seat. Good feature. It gives you all sorts of room in the back. Six and a half feet, in fact. Practically transforms the car into a miniature moving van. And it's fully carpeted back there, too. There's something else I think you like, the optional sliding metal sunroof. Chrysler Plymouth believes that since the 73 Duster is smart-looking and offers features like these, it could very well be America's best small car for the money. And I think they're right. Plymouth Duster engineering. It makes a difference. 30 seconds for station identification. It's 11 a.m. from KGW Portland. The radio bringing you this World Series is just one of the many electrical conveniences you can enjoy in your home. Portland General Electric Company can help you save electricity and still enjoy this convenience. PGE's new 12-page booklet called The Watt Watcher's Guide shows you the way. Inside, you'll find energy-saving tips you can use throughout your home. Ask your nearest PGE office for your free Watt Watcher's Guide today. Remember, electricity does so many good things for you. You don't want to waste it. We have another thriller working in for the last half of the game. Here is NBC's Jim Simpson. Thanks, Marty. Al Gray leads it off. He's 0 for 1. By the Blues, two men working and throws a fastball. It's wide to deep center field. Back goes Manuel. Looks up. It is off the wall. Down the second base goes McClay. Ball was high off the wall. I doubt that Mandel could have gone back to the wall and leaped and it reached that high. When Teddy stopped dead in front of it at the warning track and let it bounce back to it. But it is a leadoff double to McClay. And here is Hanky, who the last time up in the second inning hit the ball very hard and Rudy made a fine running catch on him. One to one the score. Vida Blue has now got that open bullpen working again as Bob Walker dashes down. They begin warming up, and along with him goes Dave Hamilton, the left-hander. Last to the fifth inning. 
Hanky, hit high from blue. And now Bando races over to buy the blue. Blue's wildness in the third and fourth inning has been low. He started off getting the ball up high, but got the pitches down that time. To McRae, he got a pitch up high. He lined it for a double, and the first pitch to Mackey is very high. Well, that pitch, right. Tom Hall, left-hander who came over from Minnesota in the Wayne Granger. Great as John of the Bullpen for Cincinnati. So both bullpen for business. McRae is down at second base. That was one ball, one strike to Minkie. Blue from the stretch. Throws the change, and that is up high. 2-1. Minkie stares down to Alex Grammis, the coach of third base. George Sugar is over first base, most to his base runner, McRae at second. Green was coming in close by the bag. Two balls, one strike. The pitch, and he's fastball and a foul away off to the right. Two and two. Donnie Bench went a divided blue 3 1 pitch into the left field mezzanine in the fourth for the first run of the ball game. And in the fifth, Oakland Cottage. Bando single and Green double to drive him in. And we are in the sixth consecutive post ball game of this World Series. Now, ball right past the club. Blue, up with the Cavaliers, going from deep short stop, and he's going on a great play as McRae goes to third. Cavaliers in short center field as the ball cuts the glove of Blue, and that prevents McRae from scoring. And that is the second fine play by Cavaliers, throwing a man out, and he also made a great running catch back in the first. But that's enough to bring Dick Williams out of the dugout. about the faster hooks, Monty. We're going to see a lot of pitches here today, it looks like. Yes, the A's have uh, even two of their starters out in the bullpen, as does Cincinnati. But there's nothing to save them for. It's a long, cold winter after this one. The A's uh, in a bullpen today will have starters Jim Hunter and left-hander Ken Holtzman. Dick Williams came out to talk to Vida Blue about his pitching, but rather he might have been out there to talk about what are they going to do with McRae at third base and one out. Should there be a bunch to the right side? Should there be a bunch to the left side? What is the play? The infield has come in. Bando waved to his infielder. One to one, the going ahead run. McRae at third base with one out. Concepcion was set up with a curve in the third inning and then struck out, swinging at a fastball. This one in under the hands inside, ball one, the fastball from white to blue. This is where Blue desperately wants to strike out Concepcion again. Remove Grimsley from the mound and bring up a pinch hitter. Grimsley's out on deck. Blue's back with a ball, it's just got the knees, and that's the strike. Because Bill Haller and Concepcion stepped out. One ball, one strike. Continues in the Cincinnati bullpen. Hamilton and Locker in the open bullpen. One ball, one strike, one out, one to one to score. Aller briefly calls time. Now Concepcion is ready. Left hander Vida Blue comes back and takes something off and a pitch out looks like. Perhaps McRae on his way home from third base. Then a stepped outside as Blue was delivering the ball and took the high and away pitch. They wasted one to see what McRae was going to do. The Reds have that reputation, aggressive on the base pass. Blue looked over at McRae, who's standing there hands on hips at third base. Blue ready, pass ball, center field. Manuel there, this should score McRae. Manuel, Manuel, very deep center field. Here comes McRae, here comes the throw. Offline, it's still a one to play. Of 
Mark Ray for the double, and they're going to contest the arm for their sacrifice fly to deep center field. But don't take away what Minsky did by advancing the man from second to third. Minsky will now back for himself and take the call strike. Minsky did the job. Matter of fact, Minsky almost drove in the gray himself. Had it not been for the fine play of Captain Harrison back at second base. To the one, the Reds again have the lead. Blew right back, and Grinsley fouls it off to the left. Two strikes. Back in a one-run difference ball game again for the sixth consecutive time. The Reds lead it two to one. Lindsay allowed the bat for himself with none on and two out. Takes a high pitch. One ball, two strikes. In the sixth inning, Grimsley will be facing the left-hander Alou, right-hander Rudy, and the left-hander Epstein. Up and Grimsley strikes out swing. But one run scores on the one base hit. There were no errors and none left. At the end of five, the Reds lead the A's. Two to one. Hello. Hello, Mr. Gilbert. This is Miss Ramsey. I'm conducting a survey. Would you mind answering a few questions about air travel? I'd be glad to.
plays here going around to the right as he hits many balls to the right, has great power to right center. But his home run here was pulled, and there's one pull to left center field for base hit on two hops to Pete Rose. And Rudy, the potential tying run, is on base. That's the fourth A's hit, the first of Grimsley. And here's Mike Epstein, who is 0 for 14 and has struck out twice clean. That was against the right-hander, Nolan. Now he's got to face the left-hander. Jim, there's a scouting report single. Uh, Pete Rose was really cheating. We mentioned a little while ago, he plays Rudy about 90 feet over towards center. With a normal defense for a right-handed batter, that's an easy double. Just one body. Epstein, the left-hander, steps in. Leading off at first is Rudy. The pitch, swung on. Grounded toward first base. Perez with it. Grabs it with his bare hand and goes over and sliding around the throw, but not quite as he puts it on him. Perez had a delicate plan of something there. He grabbed it with a bare hand, scooted toward the line, never did touch the bag, but did touch Epstein as he stood around him toward first base. Rudy goes into second. Epstein is retired by Perez. Sal Bando is two for two today. If he gets to his third base hit here, we've got a tie ball game again, apparently. Bando has the A's with game winning RBIs all through the regular season. He has had no RBIs in this World Series. He scored the only run back in the fifth inning, scoring ahead of Green Trouble. Now is two for two. Both singles to left center. Since we work to Bando outside. Two out, two to one to score Cincinnati, top of the six. Rudy down to second base. Well, Ball is up and throwing again. Ball has taken a seat in the Cincinnati bullpen. Lindsley throws again outside. Lindsley, most of his missed pitches have been away from the right-hander. Keeping the ball to the outside corner, and that's where he's missed. Manuel kept out on deck. Simply throw, low and away, and it is 3 0. And now Mankey charges into Grimsley. Dennis may have gotten a sign from Sparky Anderson, who is now up and walking back and forth and looking down to the bullpen. Now Anderson is coming out. He may have gotten a signal, and that may be all on a 3 0 count. To Grimsley. Grimsley just stands there and stares back. Foot still on the rubber. Here comes Bench out. Jim, he did this. Uh, he made a change at 3-0 the other day with uh, Mike Epstein at the plate. 3-0 uh, count. He brought in Clay Carroll at that time, and Carroll threw a fastball called strike, and then Epstein went to the 3-1 pitch and grounded out. This is uh, the past thing right here. Sparky might be saying, look, don't give the guy one he can hit out of the ballpark. Yes, he's going to leave it in here. He's not. Well, he's going for the finger ball man, Pedro Bourbon, who has been around a few times before. This is the sixth World Series game, and for Bourbon, this will be his fifth. Jim, you wonder how many times uh, Johnny Bench really influences what Sparky Anderson does in a case like that. They say Bench is about as smart a cat has been around in a long time, and I would imagine that Sparky, knowing how well Bench knows his pitchers, might get a lot of valuable information out of him. Managers definitely go to catchers a lot. Well, they also tell me, Bonnie, that once you see Bench behind that play, then he should glance towards the dugout. That's just as far as he ends. He immediately goes because his catcher, only 24 years old, it's already been the most valuable player at age 22. A man who again this year has led the major leagues in home runs and an RBI. Has hit a home run here today for one of the two red runs. Marky really takes the advice of Johnny Bench. He's got everything. Got an arm. He knows how to block. He knows how to call a game. And he can hit the ball out of sight. The ball has been warming up. Now, Grimsley worked one inning. He gave up one base hit, that's it. He did walk one man, and that was by the blue. Warbone coming on. Has an earned run average of 1.76, detained in five and a third inning. 
double play. He has given up just one run. He's walked a couple. He has struck out four. And he's been very effective. When Pedro was in there, he hit that ball into the, the batter, hit that ball into the ground. He uh, has a real good sticker, not only a sinker, but it breaks down and into a right handed batter. The Reds are trying to make World Series history. No team in World Series history has ever lost their first two games at home and gone on to win a World Series. However, there have been five teams in history who have been down three games to one as the Reds were going into yesterday's game to come back and win it. The last team, the Detroit Tigers in 1968. Alvando with a count of three and all. He is two for two on the day to score the only eighth run. Steps in. We're all working to him. On this 3-0 count with two out, and Joe Rudy down to second base, and he gets the call strike, and Bando was taking all the way. Now Bando will look for his pitch. Swing, hops it up. Playable Johnny Bench. Goes aside the mass, passes his glove, and has it. And will hold on two pitches. Gets him out of it. No runs, one hit, no errors, and Joe Rudy left at second base. We go to the last of the six, Cincinnati 2, Oakland 1. Hello, I'm Johnny Bench for Anco Windshield Wipers. And I want to talk to service station men and display the bright yellow Anco Windshield Wiper service cabinet. You can make the wiper business good business simply by asking one little question of every driver. Do your wipers stick your windshield? No high pressure, no hard sell. If the answer is yes, then just replacing the stickers with fresh Anco wipers and tell them you can do it in seconds. That's all there is to do. It's as easy as taking the base on balls. That's Anco Wipers by Anderson. Come to Turkey Creek, salt weather. Turtle wax comes through because nothing comes through the turtle's hard shell finish. Shine your card of blinding brilliance in 25 minutes with turtle wax. Turtle wax. First with a line drive homer by Johnny Bench with two down in the fourth inning. Oakland tied in the fifth and a single by Van Doe, a double by Dick Green. The Reds got the go ahead run and a leadoff double by McCray and a sacrifice fly ball by Dave Concepcion. We go to the last half of the sixth inning. Vida Blue is still on Brooklyn. Once again, Jim Simpson. He rolls his over one plus to walk. Evan Harris had a great slam in the first inning. Rose walked in the third and was thrown out trying to steal. Vida Blue is still in there. Throws and he hits the chain, pops it up towards short right field. Back goes Green and Hassett. The one out. Morgan, doubled in the second, reached third on the throwing error by center fielder Manuel, but was left center there as Kevin Harris and Rudy turned an outstanding defensive play. In the fourth inning, no foul out to catcher Dean Tennant. Red's win it today. Need we remind you, it'll be a seven game series. A's come back, it's all over today. Light a blue left hand of the left hander, and he fires a spike. To Joe Morgan, who is now one for 18 in the series. But he has scored three runs. Blue right back, and there's a the ground ball to the right side. Over quickly comes three. Another hand to Epstein, and has Morgan by four, five, six. Looks like it was trouble. Epstein showed a little indecision there whether he should go for it or go for the back. Here's Bobby Colvin. Captain Harris made the good running play on him in the first. With Morgan at third base, and he struck out looking in the fourth and turned around to umpire Bill Holler and said, where was that? Colvin is the RBI leader in the series with four, and he led the Reds in the playoffs with four RBI. Blue pitches, ground ball up the middle, they get through Captain Harris. Waves at it, he goes on through to center field. Manuel is there. Colin takes a big turn. Goes back to first, and Colin at first. Here's Johnny Bent, who's hit the ball hard twice today. Walks for a home run. The A's go then. Walker and Hamilton go to work again. Pulled a Vida Blue fastball. A vicious drive down the left field line in the first inning. Joe Rudy made a fine running catch. In the fourth inning with a 3-2, 
Lee just made it too good, and Bench slided into the mezzanine in left field. Time has been called. Campanaris has come in. I don't think there's any strategy here. It's just that Locker and Hamilton have just now started to throw. Two out. Stolen at first base. Red six. They lead it by a run. They want more. Blue now ready. Set. Throw. High and away. Ball one to bench. They say when Poland leads toward second base, he is not going. When he makes a motion to go back toward first, he may be running. We're watching. And he is checked over there. Blue forces him back with a throw to Epstein, who's holding up the bag. the left foot inside the dirt, the right foot on the artificial turf. Now he's going to be checked back again. As such is the aggressiveness of this running Cincinnati ball club. And so close is the game, they can't afford to let these fellas get a jump on them. Nolan has stolen three bases in this series already in four attempts. Now he's leaning back, but he's not drawing, and the pitch is outside. It is 2-0. And Dick Williams is walking out now. That second pitch outside. Blue turns around, and now sees that Williams is coming out. Fans don't like it. They anticipate a Bob Walker, a right-hander, coming on to face bench, and they don't want that to happen. And they're going for the man. Running in. Bob Locker, Ronnie. We call Bob Locker the super sinker baller. He's been around a long time. Bob did a great job for Oakland this year. He had some misfortunes over in uh, Detroit, and that ball game where he inherited a two-run lead in the last half of the tenth inning, and the Tigers scored three to win in the fourth game of the playoff series. But Bob is the kind of a pitcher that most batters are going to hit the ball on the ground. He is a little bit like Bob Bowen. He throws a hard sinker that goes down and into a right-handed batter. He also throws the sliders. The first of all, pitcher has to have a little luck, really, uh, because most batters do hit the ball. Locker doesn't strike out too many, just the same way as Bob Bowen. You have to hope that when he hits it, he hits it at somebody, and particularly on a turf such as this. They say it's hard for a sinker baller to win on artificial turf because the ball does shoot through there so quickly. Some batters, however, will tell you that sinker baller is effective here because the ball does take crew hops through the infielders and gets out there in a hurry. So Bob Watson here is a pretty tough situation. Both managers are working here with changes in the middle of a count to a batter. Archie Anderson and Dick Williams both have drawn out a pitcher before a batter is out of his side. That's something unusual, Monty. This is Watson's first appearance in the World Series. He has been up and down throwing nearly as much on the sidelines as if he were in the game. Through this series, but now he's in for the first time. Throughout the year, he was six and one, had ten saves, and an earned run average of two point six five. Yeah, he's strictly a reliever. He has been ever since he's been in baseball. He has been around for a lot of years with the White Sox and the A's and the Milwaukee Brewers. He has never started a ball game, and in upwards of a thousand, but has never started one. And in this World Series, money it is now certainly that through six games, no pitcher has finished this ball game or has started one. Everybody has been relieved. Well, the situation is Johnny Bench has a 2-0 count to it. Colin is on at first base. Still a danger to go. Walker, a right-hander, has come on to face the right-handed bench. Colin is on his way. Fast slow down low, and Kenneth has a pop out of his hand. Fourth stolen base and five tries for Bobby Colin.
eight for 20 thus far. He is 0 for 2 today. Well, a couple of times. He's not driven in runs, but he's got a golden opportunity here. And this is a man that can hit the long ball. Walker throws just down low. It's a pitcher ball. All on. Two runs, four hits, no errors for the Reds. One run, four hits, one error for the A's. We are in the Cincinnati six in Cincinnati. Marker ready throws, ground ball fouls. Lamar passes over his head in the coaching. Austin it bounds down under the A's bullpen. One ball, one strike. Cesar Geronimo is warming up. Kyle McRae, who is money described as a real flasher, he comes up swinging, describes himself as the offensive player of the Reds. And with a 2-1 to one lead, perhaps more, they're looking for defense probably in the next inning. A ball, one strike. The Reds ready. There goes the runners, and the ball is hit up the middle, and they're running on the play. Three will score, three to one. Well, thrown out at first base. Because of the back 
Well, if he didn't tag the base, he had to throw deep, and that was in the second, and then sent Rose very deep in the fifth inning. Foul of the screen. Two strikes. Reds lead it by two. It's the first time in the World Series they have rare by as much as two runs. This is a team that was down two games to none, dropping their first two at home. They're out to open, the two out of three there. They came back here trailing three games to two. They're trying to even it today. Line drive, base hit by Bangwell to right. Bang, uh, Dolan turns it off with a fine backhanded play and holds Bangwell on to a single. And that was a fine play by Dolan. Backhanded the ball, racing toward Geronimo. They were head up on each other. Backhanded it. The board slipped through to the warning track in the wall. Bangwell had to hold on. Now the fans become apprehensive because here is Gene Kenneth. One of the few men in World Series history that have hit four home runs in the series. Foul at the plate. Kenneth hit his first two, first two times up against Gary Nolan in the first game. Then on Thursday night, he hit a home run and had an important single in the ninth inning rally. And yesterday afternoon, he hit a three run home run. He has driven in seven runs. Breaking pitch and a third close to over. Two strikes to Kenneth. He must have been catching fastball. Mandrell on a first base. We're going the right-hander throws, and the breaking pitch misses outside. Very close. And we're going through his good fastball on the first pitch, and twice now has thrown the breaking ball. Comes back to the fastball, grounded towards third base, foul ball. Menke backhands it again, and he's hits everything. 1970 World Series, everybody was talking about the most valuable player that year. It was Brooks Robinson, calling the vacuum center over third base. Mackey has not had the opportunity for the fantastic plays that Brooks Robinson turned in, but he sure has taken everything within range. And sometimes a little of those that are not in range. A ball, two strikes to tennis. The one throws a fastball, foul again at the plate. Lead it three to one. We are in the Oakland seventh in the bottom part of the batting order. LeBron throws the breaking pitch outside. Swing foul. Just he's still alive. As Vince could hold on to it. Dennis really runs to the breaking pitch outside the strike zone. Nick got a little piece of his bat on it. Still one ball, two strikes. The set throws the breaking pitch again. It's popped up. Forward, short center field. Has it. Dennis did see some of the thinking fastballs of Orbon, but Dennis is most ineffective against the breaking pitch strong line. And now Green is scheduled to hit, but is not going to hit. Gonzalo Marquez who made headlines in the playoffs and in the World Series is coming out. Marquez, one of those who comes up to swing. He is three for four as a pitcher, hitting 750 in this World Series. And Dick Green making a move now. Benching Green, who doubled in the only one that the A's have. is the man who swings and down in, uh, what was it, with Iowa, Monty, that he had such a great season before coming up to you? Yes, he did. Uh, a year before last, uh, he hit 380 in the minor leagues and felt that he should be in the big league, and he did not get a big league contract, so he held out the entire season last year. This year, he opened up with the Iowa Oaks, the Triple A Farm Club, and had a very fine year, and has been an outstanding pitch hitter. He had seven hits and 15 at bats as a pinch hitter during the last part of the season. And he's three to four here in the World Series. Left-handed batter, Manuel Phillips, first base. That's well worn away. Marquez. Don Mincher has come out on deck. And will bat for the pitcher locker. Breaking pitch misses. And it's 2-0. Oh. Marquez not only three for four in the World Series, but two for three in the playoffs. Five for seven in postseason play. Money 
this thing he held it all last year. And he's got a good leg to stand on this year. <laughs> I'll say he has. Bruno comes back to the fastball and has him swinging. Two balls, one strike. Running those seven for 15 during the season that Monty was talking about. As a pitcher to Marquez, is 12 for 22. That's better than 500. Good one to him. Perez holding Manuel on his first. Out again at the plate. And again he saw the fastball. Two and two. Going, and now the Hawks, Clay Carroll, has joined the play. Always named for players in the National and American League, the Hawk and the play. Translated Clay Carroll and Tom Hall. Fastball misses. Three and two. Three and two with one out. We will see whether or not Manuel will be off and running. Or whether he won't. Not running at first base. It's the breaking pitch. Well, don't ask. Goes to second base. This is Seth Young back to first. Two eight. And the uh, hesitation of the ball might have cost him the double play right there. Kept him alive. He has the ball. Thought about it for a minute. And then through to second base. Well, the A's and Marquez is still alive. And that will bring on Don Mitchell. Mitchell started out the year. Six home runs, 44 RBIs, and as we said back in the 1965 World Series, his first World Series at bat, the home run off Don Drysdale. Mentioned the other night, in the ninth inning of that dramatic come from behind 3-2 win, the A's had an important line drive single to right center field. Anderson. We are really being competitive. The wheels have turned in every one of these games. And with the left hand of Mitchell coming up, it might be that Tom Hall very quickly will be called in because Sparky might be having bad dreams of a Mitchell full line drive home run. And so for Ball is leaving. And as soon as he makes that change, Dick Williams will make a change. Dave Jackson was standing in the dugout with a batting helmet. Don Mincher back and have Dave Duncan pinch it for him. Duncan had a big pinch hit yesterday down the line in left field and he's been a little faster. He might have had a double on the ball in that big ninth inning. Well, these men are in the managerial chairs for this World Series going into the sixth and seventh games if it goes at far wire. Right now the Reds are certainly in the driver's seat. As said, I've got a 25-man roster and I've got to use them. So Tommy Hall hard-throwing, a little left tender <laughs> is coming on, and sure enough, Don Mincher will go back, and Dave Duncan will take his place. The A's pinch-hitting success in this series has been incredible. They had three straight pinch hits in the game night before last in Oakland, the game they came from behind and won. Yesterday, they had another couple of pinch hits. Marquez and Duncan both went up as pinch hitters and got base hits. Tom Hall is entering his third World Series game. He has worked a total of four innings thus far, has not allowed a run. He has allowed three hits, he has walked two, and he struck out three. They call him the blade, tall and thin. He'll face Dave Duncan, the big catcher who started out the year as the regular open catcher. Hit 19 home runs in the early going, and most of his RBI is 59 in the early going before Dean Tennis took over. He comes up with two outs, Marquez on his first base, in the open seventh. The A's down by a score of 3-1. to one. Jim, I'm sure there'll be a lot of discussion about whether Bo Bone thought that that was going to be the third out with a throw to first base, or if he thought the runner had taken off from first on a 3 2 count, because he had an easy double play ball hit back to him by Marquez a minute ago, and as you mentioned, he had that hesitation, he looked right at first base, right off the bat, as if he thought, well, they're two down and this will make the first. Well, let's see if it makes a real difference or not. He would have been out of the inning with the pitcher leading off in the eighth inning. As it is, he must now face Dave Duncan's hitting for the pitcher. Walker Works, the third of an inning, gave up a walk in the base hit. No luck. All right, 
Town Hall is ready. Rally Cincinnati. Rain showers expected. Hall throws, and it's up high. The Duncan ball one. If there is a seventh game tomorrow, and right now you'd have to say it looks like it, wouldn't you? The two runs is not that much, all the old since 20. We don't want any other game in the series. Rain showers are expected tomorrow. A 60% chance. One ball, no strike. Duncan tries to check his swing on a breaking pitch and cannot. It's a strike. One ball, one strike. Duncan had a sharp single down the left field line yesterday's game at the pinch hitter. They're waiting for the Reds to get out of it if they can. All is ready and throws, and this one is up high. It's two balls, one strike. The crowd in Cincinnati becomes so quiet when the A's are in any kind of threat. Monty, it's almost as though you're doing a golf match and you're close to a man about to take a putt. You don't want to talk too loud. The fear of disturbing it. There are more than 50,000 here looking on. Here's the 2 1 pitch, and Duncan's out in front of it. And it's strike two. Two strikes, two out. Olsen, seven. Left side of the infield for the right-handed Duncan, way back. The skin of the infield there, that he's 10 to 15 feet in back of it. Already 2-2, two -two and puts him out clean. No runs, one hit, no errors, and Marquez has standing at first base. We go to the last of the seventh, and the rest continue to lead the A's, three to one. My dear, I remember when traveling to Florida with an absolute delight. Oh, was it treated like royalty? Believe me, at the airport, a sky cab ran to the curb and checked in our luggage as we strolled off the ticket counter. A man in a red jacket directed us to the gate, and we never spent a minute waiting in line. Our jet was a wide ride, seven forty seven. Oh, my dear, the seats were the luxury of luxury, and the food. <laughs> oh, my God, just went by the board. We had to make. Planning stewardess to, I mean, cruelly professional. Oh, darling, the fight was all too short. And you know, our luggage actually beat us to the claim area. My aunt took the part of it such a joy. Is that a real time with our grandma? Just last month, my dear, when grandpa took me in Miami on Delta Airlines. Enjoy Delta's total service on your next trip. Charge your Delta tickets on the American Express money card. You can even extend payment for your airfare on the American Express money card sign and fly plan. Delta is ready when you are. With McDonald's Big Mac, you get a lot to ob on lettuce, cheese, special sauce, and a double helping of meat. All in a toasted sesame seed bun. McDonald's Big Mac. Open wide and say, ah. in the 3 to 1 ball game. Mickey is line to center and ground it out. 0 for 2 and takes the pitch inside ball 1. I can give you a couple of predictions for tomorrow. If it goes to the 7th game, it will be Jack Gillingham for the Reds and Blue Moon Odom for the A's and it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Hamilton is back and gets the fastball on the outside corner. Strike 1. One ball, one strike. This is still a close ball game. I think we get a little spoiled by the fact that every game has been so low scoring and so close. Here's the pitch. Down low in the dirt. Kind of pick it out. Two and one. That when any team gets a lead of a run or two, you get the feeling that that's it. The two one pitch. Hamilton comes out with a very high inside fastball and he's going to three and one. The Mikey. use Raleigh fingers today. He's been pitching so much. Tomorrow is the final day. Ball is popped straight up in the air. Tennis will have to wait for it to come down. He's got a lot of room. Crosses away his mask and has it for the first out of the Cincinnati 7. Concepcion. Who hit a final blue fastball to deep center field back in the fifth inning. Drove in the go-ahead run. McRae from third base. Sacrifice flies. Only other time at bat, he struck out. Also on a 
out of loose fastball. Allen throws, and it's a strike. On deck is Tom Hall. into the windup and changes on a breaking pitch. It's down low. Ball on. One ball, one strike. In the Oakland 8, it's the top of the batting order. But the top of the batting order hasn't done much in this World Series. Half and Eric Nalu have been handcuffed. 1-1, and the pitch is again low. Again a breaking pitch. Two balls, one strike. The day is in Pepsi on. Each team has five hits. A's committed an error that did not hurt. Reds lead it 3-1. Back on the fastball. Ground ball. A hit left field. Two hits. Hamlin gives up the first base hit. And Tom Hall will be up there. With a two-run lead, I would imagine Tom Hall is up there to move Concepcion as good seat down the second base and left Pete Rowe to go over the winning run yesterday out to bring him home. and preparing to dash toward the plate if necessary. All left-handed batters. Hamilton cares for the sign. Rose waits on deck. Handles all the way in now. Hall squares around a drift apart. Misses at the strike. That's the only one too far off the bat. Strike one. Kubiak is kept behind him. Hoping that his play off and tennis to throw him out on a pickoff play. Now Hamilton the set the things with Cavanera. Hamilton was so long in the windup that Mando had moved in so far he had to stop and look over, wondering when he was going to pitch. He was right on top of Hall. Ready again. The bullpen is busy again for the ace. Here's the pitch. It's missed again. The throw to second base as he's on his way and he's safe. Is to his because the throw is in front of the bag. Stolen base for Concepcion, and now all of two strikes can swing away. Joe Holland is the man, the right hander down on the open bullpen. Reds leading by two, hoping to add an insurance run. All can swing away. From the stretch, takes something off the pitch, it's blown away. One ball, two strikes. Oh, it looks down to Alex Grammis, the coach of third base. A chilly day in Cincinnati. Temperature in the 50s, supposed to be warmer but wetter tomorrow. The one two pitch, and he picks something off that, and Hall strikes out swinging. And here comes Pete Rose. Throws down the left 
Matthew Cohen, Matana out of Holland, warmed up. He's about to make his first World Series appearance here in the 1972 series. As Nolan warmed up, Sparky Anderson, Ed Suzuki, Paul Cohen off first base just to shake his hand. He walks to the dugout. It's six to one. Bobby Cohen has made the Reds go in his last three games. Two RBIs in each of them. Cincinnati pitching staff knows with his five run balls, the tying or winning run can never come to the plate. That's the present ratio of a five run deficit. And that makes throwing the ball a little bit easier. And you know you can throw the strike. You let him hit it. You got a big ball. He bets it to out of Jordan on his first base, and he's on his way. Nope, just me and Bluff Tennis to catch it. Took a big lead that time. And then comes back. Stolen stolen base in the sixth. He is four for five in stolen bases. Some kind of two. Now he's going for real, and it's a wild kick. Down the second base he goes. This is long away, shooting by Dennis, and Stolen is not easy. Not a stolen base, it's a wild kick. Jump on Harlan, but the signal we get from the first part to our left, wild hit. Then, how's the count of two at all? Johnny has hit a line drive, and they're going to put him on again for the second time in a row, and he's also on. And now, the right good looking bird initially, and again, it's on another stolen base. And there's ball for the bench. We lined out in the first, homeward in the fourth, and this has been walked twice intensively. And here comes Ferrer. Ferrer's has driven in his first run in this series. Six to one. All of this with two outs. All in throws. Breaking pitch. Cuts away from Tennis. And the runners move up. It was in the dirt and found it off of him. Wild pitch. That's the second. Time that Warner has gotten the ball. Roll away. This one bounced in front of the plate. The other one was under the glove of center. And the runners move up. Got to get him uh, over in Detroit in that big uh, game number four in late inning. The extra inning Joe's curveball broke off for a while. Pitch that really hurt. Nolan was coming home of curveball. Misses outside. Ball one. Oh, the Reds are really running now and trying to intimidate the A's. In this game, but there's tomorrow, and if they can get the A's off balance and shaky about their great base running, that's quite an edge to take into the deciding game. Another breaking pitch, and that's a swinging strike in Perez. The ball's one strike. An exciting game yesterday in which the A's, at the top of the ninth and the bottom of the ninth, took themselves right out of a possible win. And this today, with the Reds running wild on the bases, might set the stage for quite a ball game tomorrow. Pitch. It's in the dirt, but nobody moves up. Kind of keeps it in front of him. Third ball, and again goes into the dirt. Had Fallon been breaking on that pitch, he would have scored easily. It's 3-1 to Perez. It's 6-1 to one to score in the last of the seven. The first five World Series games have been 1-1 one -one decisions. Thank you. 
It's called noon at KGW Portland. <laughs> You don't have to give up good taste to save on calories. Diet Rice Cola tastes so good, everybody likes it. Not catching, but pitching for Ann windshield wipers. Do you know who holds the major league record for most strikeouts? Brace yourself. It is Mickey Mantle with 1,710. Of course, Mickey also hit 536 home runs, which makes up for those strikeouts. That's where batters differ from windshield wipers. Wipers should bat 1,000 every time. In bad weather, snow or rain, your life or your family's life may depend on them. If your wipers are streaking or blurring, they're striking out. And you had better bring on some new heavy hitters, like a new set of Anco windshield wiper blades, and you'll see the difference the first time they come up for action. Anco blades are made of pure rubber, and they're engineered especially for your car's windshield. You can get Anco blades or refills at most service stations everywhere. Just look for the bright yellow Anco service cabinet. It holds a complete lineup of Anco wipers for every car. The imports, too. But be sure you're getting Anco windshield wipers, the big league blade by Anderson. Hitting is a thing of momentum when one or two men get started on a club that's in a club. It can really turn everything. 
everybody on, particularly in our home park with some 50,000 cheering. And that's exactly what happened here today. The Reds got the initial charge today from Johnny Bench, who has not hit the ball long in this entire series. And he jacked one up into the left field fans to give them an early lead. The A's, however, came back to tie the ball game and have not been able to score since off the fine relief pitching of Cincinnati. Grimsley, more ball, and now Hall. The A's, when they lost Dale Rose right before the playoffs started, knew they were going to have trouble in the bullpen, and they were hoping for complete games in a series out of such as Catfish Hunter and John Odom and Vida Blue as he started here today. Dick Williams was in strong hopes that Blue might be able to carry it on in. Vida was not pitching all that badly here today. But the A's were not scoring because Nolan, who was the most ineffective pitcher so far for Cincinnati, got out of it without being hurt too badly. It is now Cincinnati leading 8-1 as we go to the top of the eighth inning, Jensen. And the top of the batting order, Monty, Campanaro, who is 3 for 23 in the series, and he is 0 for his last 15 appearances. Tom Hall throws a strike to him, making it on his ass, knowing that Wants to get his way on. There's big seven runs they got to get. All knows he can throw a strike. But this one's in the dirt. Ball one, one, ball one strike. Nobody in the red will get and Sparky hopes that he'll never have to put anybody down there. Save them for tomorrow. All can work leisurely now. Throws the pitch off speed. Go past Mackey. There's Concepcion and what a throw from Shortstop. He got it. Mackey, Concepcion was deep at shortstop, came up and done the throw, and Campanaris, remember, not slow, he's very fast, here's the Lou, with one for 20 in the series, has not hit the ball hard at all today, been retired twice by Morgan at second, lifts another ball to short right field, high and away with an off-speed breaking pitch by Hall, ball one. We are in the eighth, the Reds lead their six game, eight to one, and it looks like we go to the clincher tomorrow. Line drive on one hop. Concepcion by second fires and has a speedy alone. He breaks all by the short stop of the rest. That'll bring up Joe Rudy. Wide to right, left, and single to left. Well, this was a one nothing ball game. Cincinnati in the fourth. Tied in the fifth at one. Reds went ahead in the fifth, two to one. Edge ahead in the sixth, three to one, and got five in the big seventh to make it eight to one. Rudy is five to twenty in the series. All throws, and here's another five ball coming back toward Okamani and hit right in front of us. We've already gotten one today. That was nearly a second. I don't go to my right too well out of these boots. Bobby pulled over very quickly, showing his feet and hauls in the line by No one sits to Harris. He's on through the middle of the eighth inning, and the Reds have the commanding eight to one lead. Hey, are you one of those guys who turns into a rough neck every morning? The shaving leaves your neck rough and irritated? If it does, let me tell you about a special kind of Gillette Foaming. Ace Saver, specially made for you rough neck. Saver has 25% more lubricant than any other foamy shave cream. For better protection against shaving irritation, even on the most sensitive part of your face, your neck. So if shaving irritates your neck, get foamy face saver for the rough neck. Do you believe an anti plush would smell just like a crisp, clear fall day? Probably not, but there's a new one that comes pretty close. It's right yard natural scent, Addie's first word, and it smells fresh and clean because the scent's made from real natural ingredients. About as far from the heavy artificial smells of other anti as you can get. And it's right yard, so you know it will help keep you dry all day. Right yard natural scent, not exactly the scent of an autumn day, but about as natural as an anti can get. Well, Joe Harlan pitches here and the... 
for game number eight, the Cincinnati Reds. Finally showing their wanted speed. They got the men on base, and with the great momentum they generated, got the big base hit. And they are well out in front of the Oakland A's, and it looks as if we're going to have a big game number seven here tomorrow. And Jeff Dion, who is one for two, drove in a run in the fifth with a sacrifice line drive at deep center, single and scored in the seventh, and in the Oakland eight, has two fine throws from shortstop. Takes the breaking pitch from Harlem, strike one. Young will be followed by pitcher Tom Hall, who kneels on deck. On and back and throws the big curve at Jim's side, and Chris Young leans back away from it. That's the Bando and Manguel scheduled in the A's night with a tough blow to hold. Seven runs. On and throws another breaking pitch inside. He balls one strike to Chris Young. Billingham and Odom. Tomorrow's starters, both are right-handed. The 2-1 count. Last ball, and he swings and misses. Strike two. Two balls, two strikes. Well, this started out. World Series. A's winning two here. Then out in open. The visitors, the Reds won two out of three. And today, back home, the Cincinnati's going to tie it at three games apiece. Five left field. Goes Woody near the wall and down off the wall and past him. And Concepcion steams with the second base. He's going to try for third. Is Woody hasn't gotten the ball yet? Now comes up and doesn't make the throw. And in with the triple. Woody went to the wall and the triple bounce past him. I think you'd have to say that this is not the day of the Oakland Athletics. The pitching is not been that effective. Their offense has generated but one run, and defensively they have had problems. Only one error shows, but they have misplayed a couple of balls in the outfield. Here is Hall, and he's swinging away with the left yard third. The infield of the A's has been drawn in. Any kind of ground ball at all might get through. Arm throws, and this is a check foul off the back of home plate. Well, last night, not many people got sleep because they had to fly them from the West Coast. We got in very early this morning. Tonight, not many people get sleep. They're going to be worried about tomorrow. Here's a piece like count foul tipped off the master center. Thing that woke up the red bat. That's right. Two strikes. All just swinging that bat. Now away for the all-in pitch. It's the curveball line to the first baseman of the team. What a help. He called that ball, and FC had to make a fly leap and get to Robin on the head. Thank <laughs> you. 
bases for the club of that team. On his knees, throws on and covering, and they are out of the inning. Now runs one hit, no errors, and Concepcion left crossing home plate, but the run, of course, does not count. Well, the A's have one more chance. We go to the top of the ninth. Cincinnati, eight. Oakland, one. Let me tell you about some products I sell very proudly. Chrysler's and Plymouth's. You know why I love them? They're constantly striving to make stronger cars, safer cars, better cars that run better than any they have ever built. They all have something in common, too. Engineering care. It goes into every Chrysler and every Plymouth. That new mid-sized satellite Sebring Plus, for instance. That's some car. And they tell me the new Chrysler is the quietest Chrysler ever. And the new Plymouth Fury. Wow, there's a beautiful car. And part of the beauty of it is the way it fights rust and corrosion with all sorts of rust preventatives. See these new Chryslers in Plymouth. That's your Chrysler Plymouth dealer, won't you? Chrysler Plymouth. Extra care in engineering. It makes a difference. In Cincinnati, Marty Moore with Jim Simpson. And the score is 8 to 1. The Reds have 10 base hits. The A's have 5. And Mike Epstein has just made a fine defensive play. The end that last half inning comes around to try to get something going for the A's. They have a long road to hold as they stay in the cotton field. Epstein has a long road to hold. He is 0 for 15. He struck out twice swinging today and grounded out. And all the left handers facing Epstein, the left hander. First pitch is outside, ball one. Again tomorrow, Jack Billingham for the Reds, Lou Moon Odom for the A's, and then everybody else available. Tomorrow's the final game of the season, that's for sure. There goes the bat and the ball to the right side. The ball is fair, the bat is foul, and the ball is what counts until Epstein is out. As the Reds picks up the ball and steps on first base. Now Mike goes back to think about tomorrow's seventh and final game of the series, realizing that he has not had a base hit. In 16 official trips to the plate. And today he struck out twice and grounded the Perez play. The Reds are two outs away from squaring the series. Here is Vandal, who has two base hits, scored the only run in his foul out. Gets the next one high, foul. Perez comes over, Bench comes over. Perez says he's got it and has it. There are two outs. The Reds run out away. One squaring the series at three games apiece. After losing the first two here at home. Games like this, you remember what happened yesterday in the ninth when feeling judgment on the part of Raleigh Fingers allowed the Reds to stay in the ball game in the ninth and go ahead and score the go-ahead run. And then when Odom tried to score from third base in the last of the ninth with a tying run, he was thrown out on a ball, little pop fly, just in back of first base. Those decisions, plus today's 8-1 to one ball game, will send us through seventh game. And well, Takes a strike at the knees. Many of the Cincinnati fans are beginning to leave, figuring they'll come back tomorrow for the finale. There's the ball punched down the right field line, and it is a fair ball. Manguel is on the way around first and stops right there as Geronimo is over in the corner and up very quickly. And with two outs and trailing eight to one in the ninth. Is not the time to take a chance. The Mangrel simply held up at first base with a base hit. The first base hit off Tom Hall. He had retired six men in a row. Here is Gene Kenneth. All for three today. Drove Colton very deep in the fifth inning with his best blast of the day. Kenneth takes the pitch high from Tom Hall, ball one. This man steps up. you got to wonder whether or not he's going to set a World Series record hitting a fifth home run. This is on the outside corner. Good fastball from Hall. Strike one. One ball, one strike. 12.45 Eastern time tomorrow, the seventh and punching game on NBC Radio. And there's a change that stays high. It's two balls, one strike to Gene Heather. Seven RBIs. Cohen in the last three games has picked up six for the Reds. Already, top 
mask up. Foul. Bench comes back. It'll be too far back. If John holds on to that mask as it falls, the ball does, into the seat. Well, the American and National League have alternated the World Series Championship since 1965. And last year, it was the Pirates who won. And we'll very shortly at our first base. Not being held there. Ground ball up the middle. Trying to be flagged down by Concepcion and Camp. Mandel stops at second. And the A's are still alive. As Tennis gets the base hit. Now Ted Kubiak will come up for the first time. Kubiak, a late inning replacement. Has been in three ball games, but only at bat twice as an infield hit. Switch hitter, just to the right side to face the left hander Tom Hall. 8 2 1 the score. Cincinnati win in the ninth inning. Hall throws a strike right down the middle. What a good relief pitcher does when he's got this big a lead, he simply fires strikes. Get him to hit it. Somebody will catch it someday. Back again with a swinging strike this time, and Kubiak is down 0 2. in. Stairs back to Manguela's second. Now throws, and there's the ground ball to third base. Menke will step on third. All game is over. There's the lead of the series. Tomorrow afternoon at 1245 Eastern Time, we'll begin the game that will decide who wins the 1972 World Series. The Reds down three games to one at even of all in this inning. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two men left. The final score is a six-game World Series. Cincinnati 8, Oakland 1.